Thanks for following the Real Power family. Um, I'm Eric, this is Devin, and we're here to talk about precious metals investing. There's a lot of different ways you can invest and a lot of things you can invest in. So when we talk about precious metals, what two metals are you investing in, Devin? Gold and silver. And have you ever bought anything else like palladium? I personally have not. I just don't think there's as much value in it as gold and silver that have been used as money for thousands of years. Yeah, since the beginning of recorded history, some people on earth have used either gold or silver. As a matter of fact, August 15th of 71 until today, that would be 1971, is the very first time in all of recorded history that we didn't have a major country in the world that had their money based on gold or silver. That's the day that Nixon took us off the gold standard. And now that we have nothing but fiat money or faith-based money, money that you are required by law to take that has no intrinsic value, we need to find a way to store that value. And we store a lot of it in gold. You can invest in copper mines, palladium, this, that, and the other thing. That's not what we're talking about. When we say metals, we just mean mainly gold and silver, which is both a monetary metal and an industrial metal. What are some of the uses for silver, Devin? All these electric cars people seem to be wanting nowadays. Solar panels. Aren't they also used in windmills and a lot of other electronics? Basically, any electronics, you need to have silver to build it. There is a lot in the solar panels. In fact, there's not enough silver on earth to make all the solar panels, to make every all the electricity we need. So solar energy is kind of out unless we figure out how to get more silver. That is one of the industrial uses of this metal that can make the price rise. But again, I don't buy it as a speculation. I don't buy it hoping for appreciation. I buy silver to store value. And that's why I think you should have somewhere around 50-50. Maybe the further R you are down the road, the more gold you want to have in your portfolio and the less silver. Whereas if you're young like Devin, I buy a lot more silver than gold. And if you look at the cycles, when you get a bull market or stuff goes up in value, if precious metals are going up, silver is probably going to go up many multiple times as much as gold. In the same way, when you have a bear market or falling prices, the gold is going to come down a lower percentage than the silver. So depending on what type of the cycle you're in, right now, even though gold is as close, it's very close to 2000, which is almost as high as it's ever been, I still think we have a long ways to go in this bull market. So what are other reasons we buy gold to store value? What does that help insure us against? It helps give us insurance against inflation. So when the prices of things are rising, this, the price of this also goes up so that we can use the money to pay for the stuff we want. So back in 1971, when Nixon took us off the gold standard, gold was only $35 an ounce. Fast forward to the turn of the century and the beginning of the 2000s, it was around $300 an ounce. Now, it had gone up to about 800 and came back down. There are big fluctuations. However, if you look at it over time, for many thousands of years, gold has held its value. If you go to ancient Greece, if you go to Rome, you could have a handmade leather belt, a toga, and a pair of sandals made for one ounce of gold. Now, for an ounce of gold, you can buy a pretty nice suit and a pair of shoes and a belt to go with it. So if you take that gold and bury it in your backyard, what will you be able to buy with it in a couple of thousand years? Well, an ounce of gold might buy you a man's suit or who knows what women's clothes cost. We'll ask your mom about that. 
And if you look at many thousands of years ago, it bought the same amount. Now, let's talk about how much will a $100 bill buy you? What did 100 Federal Reserve notes buy 100 years ago, Devin? You weren't around then. Do you have any idea? That would be a few ounces of gold. I'm not sure what other things costed back then. All right. They cost a lot more. For instance, when my, right around when we went off the gold standard, a new pickup truck, you get a really nice one for $10,000. Today, you're talking 60 grand for the same truck. Six times as much for inflation. If you look at what stuff cost before we had Federal Reserve notes, when stuff, when our monetary system was based on gold, you could buy a lot more. We have lost 98% of the value of the dollar since its inception. Uh, the first dollar was printed in 1914. So in just over 100 years, not quite 110, it has lost 98% of the value. But the gold has maintained its value for 6,000 years. That is the number one reason we buy gold. Not as a speculation, not to make more money and hope it goes up, but to store the value against inflation. Think about that when your business or real estate throws off extra money and you need a place to store it.